You're not a hustler, you keep getting in front of you just can't flip it. You ain't really got it, you P Diddy, you be remixing. Oh, where we just got a new Glock, <laughs> that's a free biscuit. Penny Tupac, know what's up, we know on the mill tip. Yeah. Yo, people, what up, though? OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny, another installment of Retired from the Streets TV. This will officially mark my 40th episode. So I've been consistently, you know, putting forth the effort to drop y'all um, some content, more content, one content at least a day, at least one video a day. And eventually that's going to ramp up as I pull people into the process and get more production help, you know. I got to take y'all back a little bit with me, man. Back to 98, right? First term of incarceration. Touchdown Lakeland Correctional Facility, right? Like I told y'all in previous episodes, it was kind of nice. It wasn't a bad spot to be in. I mean, not for real. For real. If you had to do time, it was a decent spot. Real, real nice sprawling lawns, grass green as hell, flowers everywhere, no gun tower, no damn cameras nowhere, goldfish and whatnot, pond. They had ponds, rather. Soon as you stepped out of control, something like I said, with pond with gold, big them big nice goldfish. So this was real nice. Gardens, you talking about fruits, vegetables, plentiful. But in my unit, I gave y'all the story about Mr. Green, the old booty bandit who cut his wife's head off, right? And I promised y'all I was gonna tell y'all a story about a more notorious booty bandit. That me and my man's uh, BX and my man Chuck um Baker, Chuck from Saginaw. Chuck funny as hell too. I want to reach out to Chuck. I'm gonna reach out to Chuck after this um episode because I ain't seen Chuck in many moons. But we used to call this dude Skinny Black. I don't remember his real name. I, for real, for real. But we called him Skinny Black because you talking about this dude probably was five foot and he had to been no more than 103 pounds, 108 pounds or some crazy mess, right? But he he looked intimidating if you didn't know him because he was too damn relaxed and too damn nice if, if that makes sense you know how you got those two types of intimidation with people the ones who like oh, they look crazy or they look like they got something on their mind but then you got the ones who like and they don't say much and they real nice how are you i'm talking about this dude was real respectful he was real real helpful he was real like giving like hey you guys want some of these cookies i just it was that type of vibe when he was a smooth dude when it came to that but let me tell you how i find out this dude was plotting on either trying to see my buns trying to see my piece he wanted something out of not just me but a lot of the young dudes in the unit so this had happened one day right i get on my little um porter duty and i'm cleaning up the unit a little bit i'm sweeping and mopping now if you were a shower porter, they let you get to the shower before everybody else wants you clean them, even if count's not clear in a lot of in a lot of um, institutions. So this dude job was to clean the showers. But what he would do is he would never start cleaning them until he starts seeing enough of the young dudes coming from the yard, right? Playing basketball hoop and trying to hurry because you know how young dudes is. They're trying to beat the clock. You're trying to pimp that clock for as much time as you can. You out there hooping. You out there in the weight pit. You're jogging. Whatever you're doing, you're trying to get that last little minute. In. Then you're going to rush to the unit, line up real quick, take a quick five minute shower, take you a nap for count time, right? This dude started plotting on that time. And it didn't dawn on me until Chuck said something. My man Chuck Baker. Chuck, like, dog, every time this dude got all day to clean the shower, he wait to write good when when dudes is piling in there to go start setting up his stuff instead of afterwards so you ain't nobody wait that's the common sense thing to do not for doggy now the first time we really start peeping it i'm watching him he looking he on his bunk because we in the back in the corner of the unit chuck on the top bunk matter of fact me and chuck both on top bunks up under me was my dude um muhammad muslim, muslim brother and then up under chuck was my dude joe who i spoke of reese um, previously who used to let me use his tv my man um i spoke on him in the booty bandit video um joe costello i think his name was out of jackson michigan good italian dude right they that was our little cube area so we up there peeping him while he's plotting on the showers so you see him and he see dudes coming in, he grab his gloves, the yellow gloves, the cleaning gloves, right? Then he wait for a minute and he grabs some more stuff. 
Then he walk around, he make his mop water and stuff, and he make this one, he go around, he push the bucket around. And I'm peeping, I'm like, hold on. Okay, maybe it's a coincidence. Second day, second time it happened, I'm watching. Now I'm watching. You understand what I'm saying? Because Chuck didn't put it out there already. For one, and for two, he was like, dog, he be on your head. Now, I peeped this second time on my own, because Chuck wasn't nowhere to be found or where the hell he was at. But I'm looking around, and I see the dudes coming in, and here comes skinny black ass, right? Now this dude was real feminine and real skinny, and you know what I mean. And he would walk with a slither. That motherfucker would be glad. And he, so you are already peeping him because he walk all weird and shit. And then, you know, you could tell he was on tip, which meant, you know, on tip up that way meant he was homosexual. So you could tell he was on tip. I mean, no judgment, but the mannerisms. The way you talk, the way you look at dudes, ooh, you know, when you see a dude and it, ooh, he fine. Come on now, you ain't doing all that unless you swinging for the other team, homie. So no disrespect, like I always say, because I don't judge nobody, but this dude was on tip. And then I'm watching this mother, I'm watching him. And it's predatory at his finest, because he watch, he watch. His face light up a little bit. He grab his stuff, he make his move. You understand what I'm saying? Boom. Speed it up to how it got to really me. Because we got to talk about this. I'm in there trying to hurry up and hook up some food. Because I got to been working out. So I'm trying to get me a noodle started. So that boy cook up and, you know, really fully form. While, um, you know how ramen noodles is. You put the water in there. Sometimes if the water ain't real hot or if you ain't got enough time, you let it sit in that water and it blows up and it swells and it cooks on its own. I'm trying to hurry up and at least get that process started. Then hit the shower. So... I'm not paying attention to skinny black ass. I didn't kind of put him on my mind because I'm rushing. I'm like, damn, I never get my shit. Whoa, whoa. I don't see him nowhere, though. That's the thing. You don't see this dude. He usually sitting on his bunk around the same time after we start peeping his pattern. I don't see him, so it don't register with me. I holler at my man BX. Hey, at the count, let's hear some chests going. Boom, boom. All this, right? Go shoot down. Grab my stuff. Post up for the shower. Boom. Still don't see no skinny black. Grab my noodle out the microwave. The dog was watching for me. So I had it going for about two or three minutes. While I'm grabbing my shower stuff. Grab this shit out my microwave, fool. Boom. Slide down and throw the cheese in there, the beans. Woo -woo, let it sit. I go back. But as I'm getting my damn clothes off, as I'm taking my shirt and stuff off, who been the damn corner? Coming into the shower, skinny black ass. I immediately, I immediately got on tip pissed and i don't tip on that tip but i immediately got it like bro why you don't wait to clean this month because we had already been talking about it and everybody asked him why this nigga don't clean the shower and wait to clean the shower to when it's over and everybody out the way so i'm like bro why you don't clean the shower when everybody you come in here with all that stuff in the way i can't say nothing about him coming in the shower because it's an open shower set like three to four shower heads on that side three to four shower heads on this side open floor in the middle so you got your back against the wall not against the wall but facing the wall usually washing up and a lot of times you wash up in your drawers if a motherfucker like skinny black around skinny black was the one who, st who got me to start washing up with my drawers on with my damn boxers on i would wash up with them boys on feel me and and that'd be that and when i get back around to the spot i slide them boys off and dry off you know whatever i got to do when i get into some cover he got me on tip like that i asked him that and he was like what does it matter you listen i wanted to slap you like who is you talking to for one if I ask you a question, Lane, just answer me. I'm asking you why you don't do the sensible, logical thing. Plus, I'm really agitated because I think you've been on some predator stuff with me. I'm almost 90% sure you are. That was the first time. The second time, I promise you, because I thought about it, and I ain't like that. And you know how you put energies out there? Like, man, I want to slap I want to slap this, man. I want to smash You want to ask me some shit like that. Talk. It was more dialogue. I don't remember the specifics, but he was getting smart a little bit. So boom, come on, phone, shut up. So boom, that happened. Second and final time, this happened between me and him. We ain't had no problems no more. I duped his ass. He thought I was going to the shower. I got all my stuff together, right? I seen him plotting. He on his bed, flipping through a magazine like he ain't paying attention. But I seen him looking up over his little reading glasses. He flipping through the magazine. So I say, hey, bro, tell Chuck or whoever it was, either Chuck or BX, I'm about to hit the shower. I get a little loud so he can hear me. Right? I'm about to hit the shower. I'm going to highlight y'all in a minute. Boom. So, when you've been in the corner where the shower is at, you can always, you can either go straight to the showers or turn, make a quick right, and it's a day room right there. You can pop in the day room and get in the doorway where the microwave is at, right? And you can kind of peep out and see who's going down the hallway to the shower. 
So by the time I've been in that corner, I heard from different day room. I do like this and I fall back in one of them chairs. And I'm looking out the doorway because you got the doorway. And you got a little bit of a crack you can look through, right? I'm looking like, hey, his ass come. Hey, his ass come. Right? So I, I hop up and slide down the hall. He look in the shower. Then he look back. I said, who you looking for? I'm like, dog, who you looking for, bro? You looking for me or who you looking for somebody else? Ah, uh, no, I'm about to do, no, you ain't about to do your job, dog. Let me explain something, homeboy. Follow me to the shower again. Follow me and one of my men to the shower again. It's going to be a problem for you, dog. I'm going up Sagio Hill with some homeboy. It's going to be a problem. You're getting off this yard. You're going to get out this unit. I promise you that much. I was pissed. Because my thing is, bro, if I ain't on tip, don't be following me with your lame ass. What's wrong with you, dog? Take that shit back home with you. Oh, that's why I say homosexuality in prison is a lot different than it is in the streets. Homosexuality in prison will almost make you despise homosexuals all around the world, no matter where they're from, because these dudes be on a different level sometimes. They be on that tip of like, I'm going to make him like that I like him. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I don't care if he ain't attracted to me. I'm going to make him like the fact that I like you. He ain't got to like me back, but just like that I like you. I done heard a motherfucker say that to him before. You're going to like the fact that I like you and you can't do shit about it. You can't do nothing about it. Nah, nah. And if you if you put your hands on I'm telling. And if you send your brother mans at me when I ride out somewhere, so I'm telling on their ass too, all y'all to go down and fuck with me. I'm like, whoa. Now you, he put himself in that position. This skinny black dude, I threatened him. I promise you. We didn't have no problems after that. But all that energy I put out there towards him about wanting to smash, he wanted to hurt him. I promise you. Like two or three days later, he had passed out in the middle of the walkway um, between like the beds, like, you know what I'm saying? The back hall we were at, like where the bunk beds was at, he passed out in between the bunk beds and the and the Cadillac bunks, what we call it, the ones that were individual bunks. You you bend the corner, you see the COs and whatnot, and they kind of blocked it off to so stand back and y'all stay over there for a minute, clear the unit, everybody clear the unit for a minute. This dude passed out. Like, you know how a, a old banana look, the old black ass banana when it's old, and somebody step on it. That's how he looked like a big ass black banana land there. Cause he was all skinny and frail. He, he passed out. He got blood coming out of his nose and out of his mouth. And the rumor was that he had contracted something along the line of AIDS or HIV. And when you look at his his damn picture, cause you know at the head of everybody bed, they have your um what a damn! I got one somewhere too. They got your picture um, up there and whatnot. I got one of them boys. I'm gonna show y'all. It's like a, a header. You got your picture and your inmate name on it, and boom, you could see the the weight difference and all the way he had on his face from that picture, which he had probably took when he first came down. That's usually the case. Just like for example, ooh, let me see these IDs y'all see right now. You see that they basically look the same as those. Except it's a header and it give you your information and let you know this who's staying in this bunk. The weight difference on his face was was significantly heavier on that picture than it was in real life. You could tell he had lost a lot of weight. So it made you think that the rumors were true. And I'm and we didn't see him after that. I just we didn't see that man no more after that. I don't remember him coming back to the unit. I remember them talking about he had, he got rushed to Dwayne Waters Hospital, um, which is the, the, the main hospital for inmates in Michigan. And yeah, that was the last time I seen Skinny Black. And I kind of felt bad. So I'm like, damn, did I put that energy out there? Because I wanted to hurt that man. I wanted to hurt him bad. I ain't going to lie. Just because of the fact that you on, on tip watching these young dudes. It ain't like you in here with a seasoned vet dude who on tip with you, who who homosexual with you, who like that. No, you praying on young dudes who ain't, who ain't with it at all because you got off on that type of um, shit. That turned you on, probably. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Come on now. These dudes who ain't thinking about no homosexual activity ain't cut into you, ain't even looked your way. And every time they go wash their ass, hey, you come. So I, I felt bad. And then again, I'm like, that's karma on your ass because you should have been chilling the fuck out. You should have been falling that back, Skinny Black. You know what I mean? So I don't know whatever happened to Skinny Black. I don't know what his case was. I don't know what he done after that. I just know that I was mad uncomfortable. And this was the first time I really started thinking about hurting somebody when i was in prison that was probably one of the first times yeah that was the first times i when i got to prison i thought about actually smashing somebody and 
and I was all also a little intimidated because I'm like, oh, this dude black as hell. Not to talk about dark skinned people, but it's just like he looked menacing because he was so skinny with it and his structural shit with skeleton and all that was going on and sunken eyes a little bit. And it's like, bro, you look weird and you move all slithery. Like, I don't like it. I don't like that look for you. And it's not a good look for you being around here predator status on people, bro. I look, I appreciate y'all letting me rant. You know what I mean? Because I, I kept thinking, I, I'm like, I skipped the story somewhere along the lines. And that was one of the ones I skipped. That one and the one for the green tag that I, look, I dropped my hard drive a little while ago. Shit happens. I wanted to film it over just to give y'all another gist. And I might do that. It started from scratch because what I got so far that I recovered is all over the place, man. Thank y'all for being patient with me. Thank y'all for appreciating and tuning in to episode four zero, the big four zero. OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny, retired from the streets TV. Man, please look, do me a favor right now before you hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Tell your people at work to hit the subscribe button. Do that. Damn, you Randall from recess. You tell a lot. I'm like the Weight Watchers. I use my scale a lot. Stop window shopping one packs. You gonna be a seller or not? You ain't never send no bullets at them or trailer out. My bitch remind me of RJ. She always trippin'. They get into it with us to turn the sauce chips. They always dipping. Yeah, we could do the same shit, but I say it different. My young boys Jehovah Witness. They be paying visits. How you a player like you say you was for that pussy you paying pimpin'? Everything I put out so raw, you just can't sniff. I got the best O line, even on goal line, you can't bliss it. You not a hustler, you keep getting front of, you just can't flip it. You ain't really got it, you P Diddy, you be remixing. Oh, where just got a new Glock? <laughs> That's a free biscuit. Penny Tupac know what's up, he know on the mill ticket. They probably feel your music a little more if you real with it. I get that sniff sniff and put my heel in. You have PlayStation party meetings, I'm about real big. I'm a SCD, I'm here, you don't like it, gotta deal with it. I don't like that boat, but it's so low, I'ma still get it. If you drink it green, lean, take a pill with it. I hope every real nigga doing time get a pill with it. They say real, don't say they real, but I'm a real nigga. I ain't lying, even if I was blind, I wouldn't feel niggas.